Hi, my name is Robert Dietz. I'm the owner and founder of WB Cars. We uh, have got this great Unimog here today we're going to walk through. Uh, it's going to be live on Bring a Trailer. Uh, if not live already, uh, let's take a look at some of the details. So you may recognize a uh, Unimog like this uh, from uh, Bring a Trailer. We had a crew cab, uh, same owner, same collection. Uh, very similar looking truck, except that one was a crew cab, whereas this one is a short wheelbase uh, with a, uh, a single cab instead. That was a custom made cab, whereas this was a, uh, a factory setup. One of the big differences you'll see right away is in the front, we've got a winch on this one, hydraulically controlled. Um, not sure on how much it'll handle, but I would, uh, I would say you're probably pretty safe on most things you'd ever need to winch out, especially your friend's Wrangler. Uh, a lot of hydraulic attachments in the front uh, for various add-ons that you could ever want. Some steps and so forth to reach anything up high and some nice kind of agricultural style lights for some extra brightness off-road. These Michelins are just fantastic tires, 20-inch uh, wheels. Uh, it's a 395 series uh, with tire, and they are regroovable tires as well. Four-wheel drive, as you could imagine, with front, center, and rear diff locks. Radiators here on the side, battery box, some air canisters as well. The bed's an interesting piece on this. Both the sides and the rear will fold down, so that way you have a little bit of access, uh, as well as you can dump the bed to any side you want, either to the rear or to either side. Tipping the bed's actually quite easy. We select the valve that we want on it, and up she goes. The truck was originally orange. Um, we've gone with this kind of military black carbonish wrap. Uh, it has a little reflective nature to it, which is nice, and you can't really go under the radar with this truck, so you might as well embrace kind of the absurdity of the largeness of it. And uh, we thought this was just kind of a nice little add-on for it. We'll come around the back here. Some more uh, hydraulic attachment points as well, and various attachment points, D-rings and tow hooks and so forth for whatever you could want to tow. Underneath the truck is obviously a plethora of interesting things as well. The transfer case on this is probably about the size of your average car. We'll come around to this side. There's a few other little interesting pieces on this side. Gas tank is on this side. I believe it's about a 60 gallon tank. Plenty of diesel for you. Some more cooling and obviously the exhaust. You can take a look inside. We'll hop up in. A few steps to get up in here. Now, the heart of the operation. In front of you, pretty familiar stuff. Simple gauges, RPM, speedometer, fuel, air pressure for the brakes and, and other systems. In the middle, it starts to get a little bit more uh, interesting to the truck. This is diff lock control for center, rear, center, and all front, rear, and center. You can open windows, change idle speed, some beacon controls for lights, shut off your ABS if you were off-road, and a few other small features. As far as shifting is concerned, you've got this small electronic shifter here. The clutch is still operated like a normal clutch would be, but here you'll actually be able to push forward to select through your gears like a sequential shifter. And same thing with reverse going backwards. There's two buttons on either side, and both of them together will select neutral. Over here, hydraulics. This is how you're gonna control your winch, your bed, and any other attachments that you put on your hydraulics. You would turn it on with this red button here, and then you pick which, which valves you'd want and be able to control it with the joystick, depending on what, what feature you're using here. But like any Mercedes, you still have nice air conditioning. These cloth seats are uh, kind of a typical Mercedes uh, pattern for uh, some of their commercial trucks. This is just your, your parking brake on or off. It's air controlled, so you get that great uh, kind of air sound every time you pull up. And you still get a radio up top, which is fantastic. Seating for three. And it's a comfortable seat, particularly the driver's seat, because it is on air. So as you drive down the road, the air will cushion your, your, uh, your kind of bumps and so forth in the road. As you can see, the windshield's quite enormous. Visibility's fantastic out of the front. In fact, the only thing I can really see from here is just the winch. I can't see much else. You'd think you're going to be a little intimidated when you get in, but after a few moments with it, you realize it's just a very large vehicle, but quite easy to drive. Brakes are, are easy, clutch uh, is assisted, so it's actually quite light. Um, and our, your gear selector will not let you select a gear that the engine doesn't want to have uh, at the time. So you can hold back on it or, or forward and it'll pre-select gears for you and, and uh, not allow you to over-rev the engine. 
So one of the really interesting features on this is obviously the four-wheel drive system, the ride height, and its capabilities in just about any terrain you could ever throw at it. One of the most interesting features, and I'm going to thank uh, Chris Cushing, who is, works with Bring a Trailer and found out this fact. I want to make sure he gets credit for it. Um, the lowest speed that you can drive this truck at in its lowest settings of a transfer case is at idle 0.09 miles an hour. It's a 3,000 to 1 crawl ratio. So I could put this thing in its lowest setting and step out and probably go to lunch and it'll only be about 15 feet away. So let's start it up. Simple as, as anything else, key on. It's gonna make a lot of beeping noises first and tell you that the world's coming to an end because there's no pressure and so forth. Turn the key. Right now it's telling us it's building up some pressure and that we're in neutral with the brake on. My seat's rising up right now, which may be a little bit hard to see, but that's built pressure. The clutch is also built pressure now, so it's a lot easier to push. You could push it without the, the assist, just a little bit heavier. Let's try out this horn. Yeah, it works. Power steering, easy to drive. Nothing too worrisome there. So one of the nice things about this truck too is that it's, it's not as big as what you think. Now I know this sounds a little strange, but it's a little bit more on the narrow side and it's not insanely long. So you can find yourself driving around quite easily with it. You've got a regular horn to choose from too if you don't want to choose the, the air horn. A lot easier than what you think. That's a little bit about our Unimog. It'll be coming live to Bring a Trailer, www.bringatrailer.com. If you need to find it, you'll go to the upper right-hand search box, try Unimog or U500. I'm sure it'll be pretty easy to find. I'm Robert Dietz with WOB Cars. Look forward to the auction. Hi, I'm Randy Nonnenberg from Bring a Trailer. Bring a Trailer is a web-based uh, auction platform for listing, buying, and selling interesting vehicles for sale. Uh, and we're here uh, during Peterson Car Week uh, as part of our video features. And we're really excited because everybody says, what's BAT all about? And it's about the cars that we have listed there. Cars, trucks, uh, interesting memorabilia, all sorts of things. So. Uh, one of our best sellers is here joining us today, and I'm super excited to have him join us uh, and tell us what he has live on the site right now. Uh, that is Rob Dietz. He's joining us from Southern California. He is known as Wob on the website, W-O-B, uh, also Wob Cars online. You can find him. He has sold uh, as many or more listings on BAT uh, as anyone else. He's one of our best sellers. Uh, Rob, good to have you today. Thanks, Randy. I appreciate it. Yeah, we have uh, always, you know, hundreds of cars going live now at any one time on Bring a Trailer. Uh, but you have something special this week uh, that is listed live. We're going to show some pictures of and talk through a little bit today. What uh, What's that vehicle? Tell us about it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, go back uh, about a year or so ago, we uh, offered on Bring a Trailer a special built crew cab Unimog U500. So only brought a few of them into the United States, uh, and uh, this one was done in a custom kind of crew cab style, which was really interesting and had uh, had some great uh, fanfare to it. And it was one of uh, Bring a Trailer's more noteworthy, uh, highest kind of uh, uh, you know viewer hits. And uh, so now we've got its little cousin coming, uh, which is a single cab, short wheelbase. So not the full crew cab, if you want to be a, just a little bit uh, less ostentatious, perhaps. Um, but uh, another one uh, just ready for much any anything you could ever throw at it. Uh, really special car and, or should I say truck, because that's very much a truck. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of fun. I, I always think it's a, a great to bring some of these really interesting, fun uh, vehicles to bring a trailer because you guys are certainly the medium to uh, to show them off and and get the butts in the seat for sure. Fantastic. Well, I'm excited about this listing in particular. Uh, we haven't talked about this model too much, but I'm a nut for these and I love them. And I know they've been making them ever since, you know, the 50s when they were like tractor like. And then the modern present day ones are, I mean, you can get them in all sorts of spec. Is this is this one from the early days or a more modern version of, a, of the Mercedes model that you have now? Yeah, this will be, this is an 03, which is um, 
there was a small window between 02 and 07 where Mercedes actually imported this via their Freightliner channel. Uh, and there, I, I want to say there was 150. I may be quoting the number off a little bit, but there was a small number that came into the U.S. And most of them were used as either municipal trucks or agricultural or, you know, different capacities that you would need something that has three diff locks and, you know, enough ground clearance to drive over a beetle. So, uh this truck, uh, in that case, is uh, is an 03, a little on the newer side. You get some more of the modern features and air conditioning and so forth and an air ride seat and all the things you'd want out of, uh, you know, a pretty versatile truck. Yeah, fantastic. I test drove one of the older ones, which was a diesel non-turbo model uh, <laughs> from the late 70s, early 80s. And, you know, you're praying on the freeway that you could get up to 60 and everything. I mean, it was super cool. Best yeah. looking truck you could ever find parked static. But once you were driving it, you're kind of like, what? You're not taking your life in your own hands, you know what yeah. I mean? And they, yeah. through the 90s and then 2000s, and even I think they they make some of these sort of present day. Uh, I mean, the turbo's got so much better and the interior's got, it's like a really usable, livable vehicle. I think it's still a monster, but it's, uh, I'm sure it's, you know, trimmed out much different than the earlier ones. Absolutely. And and it's a lot easier to drive than the size makes you think it's going to be. Uh, the clutch is assisted, so uh, so it's not a super heavy clutch. It's an electronic shifter where you can pre-select gears. And if you try and go up or down too much, it'll kind of bark at you and say, no, I'm not going to do that for you. And uh, it's the, the view out of the truck is fantastic. You can see completely in front of you. It's a very abbreviated front end, obviously, and out the sides is good. And you don't really feel that closed in where you're kind of panicky driving it. It's a reasonably comfortable experience. And this is driving along, or along in Los Angeles. You know, it's not on some country road. So it's an easy truck to drive and it's nowhere, you know, it's not even close to the uh the the snail like speeds of the earlier trucks yeah. where you know it was like a 240d motor that was in there <laughs> empowering the whole truck so uh this this will hang with traffic no problem i've been on the highway 65 no problem and you know sit back and relax and hands on the wheel and put the radio on and yeah it's an enjoyable experience cool fantastic O three 3 mercedes you've sold a lot of vehicles on bat and i'm sure a few of them have been you know, 2000 to 2005, 2010 Mercedes, some interesting models in there. When you sit in this thing, I mean, is the switch work and the steering wheel, does it remind you of E-Class, S-Class, or are we talking totally different DNA? Yeah, I, there's the little hints of it. There is um, some of the upholstery, when you, <clears throat> when you look at this truck, has some of that kind of European cloth, um, German car feel to it, which is nice. But in 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 large amount, it feels a little bit more like you're in something that's a little more purpose built, uh, a little more freight liner than anything else. Um, but that said, this truck's got 4,000 miles on it. It's like brand new. As soon as you open the door, it smells like a new car inside. So you do have this kind of hint of that this isn't a truck as much as it is, you know, uh, a all terrain, all purpose, all knowing, all seeing vehicle kind of thing that Mercedes was able to make uh, and kind of put their little special blessing and touches on where you could take it anywhere and not worry about getting home. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, I love it. So tell us, I mean, not many miles on it, it sounds like. What, what's the story with this thing in terms of was it, was it a municipal vehicle that didn't get used or was it a private collector sort of, sort of a property truck or what did it get used as? Yeah, a lot of these went to municipalities. There were some that went to some collectors initially, but uh, this one was with a manufacturing company on the East Coast, and uh, I'm not sure in what capacity they used it. Obviously, they didn't need to use it very much. Um, with that in mind, um, we bought it with, I want to say, probably just under that maybe 3,000 miles, something to that effect on it, and used it around town and for some just kind of fun events and so forth. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, it, it led a pretty uh, soft life from what I can tell. It wasn't, uh, you know, doing anything too crazy out in the in the wilderness or anything or plowing snow in the Himalayas. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> cool. Well, we love having these. We have a whole page on BAT, which I can plug, uh, that is just results for you know, the Unimo line at Mercedes, and there's a bunch of results on there, every different spec from the tilt bed pickup to the fire truck to the who knows what. Um, but these modern ones, I actually think are special. I mean, on the on the enthusiast uh, pages, and I don't know if you know, Couch Off Road is a vendor in Colorado that's big into that model. And uh, there's some specialists that are out there. The modern ones, like 2000 and later, like this are hen's teeth in the USA. You, we never see them. And so we're always saying, uh you brought some interesting stuff uh, along like that and 
uh, the vintage ones are really, like I said, romantic. And I really want to have one of those parked in the, in the garage or in the uh, property or wherever. Uh, but getting a new one like this is really special. So really appreciate you bringing it to BAT. Yeah, absolutely. It's the only place that I could imagine bringing it. I, it's the it's the only place that that has the right car collectors with the right thought of uh, kind of lightheartedness and fun and purpose. And, uh, you know, I, I love when I can especially bring interesting things to bring a trailer. I think that's what makes it special. You can find, you know, the regular car anywhere you want. But the the special cars, the ones that make you smile or laugh or the particular, uh, particularly curated versions of cars that, you know, Porsche 911, yeah, you can find a million of them, but uh, you know, it's always nice to find one that you can really kind of say, hey, this is a particularly really special, really nice car. So happy to bring it to BAT, absolutely. Cool, fantastic. Well, we're excited that it's live. Uh, we know you're bringing some other stuff through uh, as well. Can you give us any uh, teasers or hints of what's in the pipeline? Any other? Yeah, there, there's coming along. You've sold a U.S. Army tank on BAT before. You've sold McLarens and Lamborghinis and all the everything under the sun. Any other uh, curveballs coming? You know, there's, there's, uh, I think we're finishing up a 812 super fast if we haven't finished it. And, you know, which is fun to kind of add some a little more modern and, and fast to show you what the other pointy end of the spear can do. Um, we've got something kind of fun coming up that I was, uh, that I was thinking about that. Um, we've got a Myers Manx buggy replica. It's, it's not an original, so everyone won't, you know, jump all over us for it, but, uh, it's done as a, uh, a buggy jolly. So wicker seats and the, uh, the, the tassel top and the chrome bars and everything. And so it's a kind of a fun, uh, homage to the jolly while still having this beach buggy flair to it. So you guys will be getting that pretty soon and that'll be a lot of fun, I think for everyone. So cool. I love it. There's a two-car garage right there. You know, the Mercedes Mega 4x4 <laughs> next to a Manx Jolly. You know, you can't... Yeah, well, you can put it in the back of the Unimog. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well, uh, Rob, really appreciate you joining us. Really appreciate uh, that that uh, vehicle's live and so many that you bring are so well presented and everybody always appreciates that. We're adding new features to BAT where you can actually subscribe and get alerts when special uh, people or sellers list a car. And I'm sure the the WAB page, people will be subscribing to that to say, hey, alert me when I uh, see another crazy vehicle coming from this guy, because they're always they're always such interesting stuff. So anyway, uh, thanks so much for joining. Uh, and it's fun to be part of Peterson Car Week again and have you be part of it. Thanks. Appreciate it, Randy. Yeah, you bet. Thanks, everybody. Taylor, Regional Product Trainer for BMW of North America. I am so excited to be here today at the BMW Performance Center in Thermal, California to show you something very special. Since its launch, the 8 Series has proved to be one of the most diverse lineups for BMW offering three body styles, along with three different engine options. Beyond the 840 and very capable M850i xDrive, we are now diving into race car territory with the full-blown M version, the M8. The launch of the new M8 is unique in that the race car made its appearance almost two years before the production versions were available in the showrooms. In that time, the BMW M8 GTE collected three victories, including the prestigious 24 Hours of Daytona. The M8 GTE was noted to be the most elemental, determined race car that we've ever built, and the M8 has noticeable connections with its ancestor. What sets the M8 apart from the rest of the 8 Series family? Well, this vehicle is lighter, stiffer, faster, and even more track capable than any other 8 Series that we've had before. The M8 was originally bred in a coupe, grand coupe, and convertible version with breathtaking zero to 60 times offered on all three body styles. 
Today, I am here with an M8 competition coupe cloaked in a very special Rosso Corsa Red. With our BMW Individual Program, you have the ability to personalize your vehicle with custom paint finishes and unique interiors. It's truly where you can have your automotive fantasies come to life. The M8 Competition is equipped with a twin power turbocharged V8 that makes a staggering 617 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. If you're not already smiling, I'm sure the impressive 0 to 60 time of 3 seconds flat will. Controlling all that power is handled by the standard active M differential, the Sport Automatic Transmission, the M X Drive system, and the adaptive M suspension. It doesn't just look sporty, but everything in this vehicle was designed with performance in mind. Take a look down here. This area is not just beautiful, but very functional as well. It has optimal aerodynamics, and this area is for cooling the engine, and these areas are for cooling the brakes during a track in endurance driving. Let's take a short walk around the car to get a better look at some of the unique things that make this M8 so special. Some standard features, such as this M carbon roof, the weight-saving exhaust system and the aluminum subframe and suspension help increase speed and agility by reducing the weight of the vehicle. These are 20-inch bi-color wheels with performance tires to withstand the demand of the track. When you have a big engine and big wheels, though, you definitely need big brakes. This M8 comes standard with robust six-piston calipers in the front, a floating caliper in the rear, and you can get them in blue, black, or red. These gold calipers that you see right here are paired with carbon ceramic rotors, perfect for the track extremist. You can't have all this power without some growl, so let's go check out the tailpipes on this beast. Every M car comes equipped with a quad-tipped exhaust system, and although this M8 delivers an impressive exhaust note, you can still keep your neighbors happy by using the selective mode in the cockpit to tame the rumble down. This might have the characteristics of a race car, but practicality does not fall short for an everyday driver. Take a look at this trunk, for instance. The kick to open function makes it easy when your hands are full. And who's ever heard of a race car that can fit full-size golf bags and several check-in suitcases? You can even fold the rear seats down if you need additional space. Enough back here. I'm excited to show you what's inside. Let's go. Have you ever seen one of these before? This is the key. If you don't want to carry around your key fobs, you can keep this in your wallet, slide it right up against the driver door handle, and you're in. It's waterproof and slim, easy to carry no matter where the road takes you. As soon as you open the door, you can see all of the M-specific badging. There are even race-inspired accents on the seat belts. The seats themselves place you in the position of power with a standard full merino leather and adjustable side bolsters that support you in the turns. Any form of the M8 is certainly a performance star. This includes the technology embedded throughout. The standard iDrive 7 system is focused towards the driver and offers ease and functionality even if you're going the top speed of 190 miles an hour. Additionally, the M digital instrument cluster and head-up display have been designed with the driver in mind. When you activate track mode, you can watch the entire display adapt for intense driving focus. Notice these M1 and M2 buttons located conveniently on the steering wheel. You can save your favorite combinations of settings here for quick adjustment between road driving and track driving. Everything is fully customizable, including the sportiness of the engine, suspension, steering, brakes, and so much more. As you can see, high performance truly meets high class in the sporting Grand Tour. A race car for the streets, you will not be disappointed. Thank you for joining me here at the BMW Performance Center. Stay tuned for more exciting overviews with BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Some extremely rare vintage cars are meant to be appreciated like works of art. Admired from afar, but never touched and never driven. The 2002 Turbo is not one of those cars, and this is your chance to win one. That's right, to support a great cause, Omaze is giving you the chance to win this 1974 BMW 2002 Turbo with taxes and shipping included, plus $20,000 cash. Developed by BMW Motorsport, the 2002 Turbo is famous among car enthusiasts for its aggressive design, its incredible performance, and most importantly, for being really, really fun to drive. This specific 2002 has been carefully restored by its previous owners, two people who know a thing or two about having fun behind the wheel, legendary racing drivers Bobby and Graham Rahal, and they spared no expense. 
check it out. The 2002 Turbo's iconic silhouette is immediately recognizable with its wide fender flares and undeniably slick M Turbo graphics. The interior has that effortlessly cool retro racer feel with a red gauge cluster surround and Recaro sport seats. And under the hood, it's running an M10 2 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. So don't miss out. Click the link or go to omaze.com slash turbo and enter now for your chance to win this 1974 BMW 2002 Turbo with taxes and shipping included, plus $20,000 cash. Best of all, every donation supports the Peterson Automotive Museum and their mission to explore and present the history of the automobile and its impact on global life and culture. Thanks for donating and good luck. Hi, I'm James Humphrey from Donut Media, and this is Nolan Sykes from Donut Media. Hello. We make a bunch of different YouTube videos about cars. We got a new video pretty much every day. And one of those shows that we have is called High Low. And the basis of this is we took two identical Nissan 350Zs. One of them got really, really expensive parts. One of them got really, really cheap parts. And the idea was to show the car enthusiasts what they could probably save some money on and what really made a difference if you spent the big bucks on it. This is honestly the, one of the best things that we've ever done and one of the things I'm most proud of ever doing. I became even more proud when we got <laughs> uh, news that both of these cars, these Nissan 350Zs that we built, were gonna be in the Peterson Museum. I was on team high because technically I am Nolan's boss, um, and I got to choose. <laughs> with my friend Zach Job, uh, who hosts another show on our channel called Money Pit, and we did so much stuff to this thing. We have like KW V3 suspension, uh, Advan wheels, huge, huge, huge uh, Bremo brakes in the front and the back, Jim Wolf twin turbo kit, Bomex body kit. Like basically, everything is like pretty period correct. We wanted these cars to be built with parts that people could buy off of the shelf or off of the internet. So most of the stuff for these cars was sort of like designed back in 2005. Um, so mm -hmm. I really do think like, this thing is my high school dream car at its current state. It's sort of like in 2005, this would have been the coolest uh, Nissan 350Z in the world. Like this would be a magazine cover car. For sure. I mean, I, I I still think it qualifies as one of those, man. Like, it's it's so cool. It really came out really well. Even if it has some small reliability issues here and there, it's still <laughs> one of the best cars I've ever driven yeah. by far, easily. But then, On the other yeah. end of the spectrum, yeah. we have low car, which has none of those expensive parts. The coilovers at first were like $250. They looked like they were made out of um, gardening hardware. <laughs> Like they look, <laughs> yeah. They look like the same uh, yeah. metal that, like, not even a nice trowel is made out of. Like the like the cheaper trowel. No, trial. it looked like playground equipment or something you'd get in like a some sort of kids meal. <laughs> and then of course we the 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 exterior is covered in plasti dip, which right now it looks great because we did it right. But the first time around, we it was a different color, it was a darker blue. We just totally messed up. Had the wrong equipment, didn't know what we were doing, rushed a little bit, and it was awful. But now we've, we've since corrected it. It looks really great in my opinion. First, I want to apologize for doing such a horrific job uh, last time around. No apology necessary. I do appreciate you guys being willing to uh, take out a crack at it. Uh, even with the, uh, I think it was a $300 body kit, mm -hmm. I believe, $200 or $300 body kit, yeah, uh, which was a major hassle to put on the car, but I think it came out looking pretty sharp. Looks pretty good. It looks like a, it, the money. It looks like a video game car, whereas like what, yeah. where high car I think is like in 2005, it would be one of the nicer 350Z builds out there. Honestly, there's some fit and finish stuff because we did shoot this show. Uh, under a pretty tight time crunch because production. Um, yeah. But on the other hand, I think in 2005, low car would definitely be the coolest car in your parking lot of high school. Oh, for sure. Like 1,000%. Sure. Um, yeah, no, no debate there. Yeah. James, what do you think was your most fun episode or moment, do you think? 
Most fun to shoot or most fun to watch in hindsight? Because it's very, little... it's very different. Some of the stuff that I loved watching is some of the stuff that I hated doing. Yeah, yeah. So I think most fun doing at the time because I think that's what that's what really makes the drama for me mm -hmm. in that show is our pain. Mm -hmm. But there was also a lot of fun yeah. along the way. Oh, it was just on fire. Burn right through this this wow. line right here. No! You good, Noam? No, Eddie, not good. What the fuck you think, dude? Okay, <laughs> three, two, one. Yeah. All right. We're going to Albuquerque, baby! There's the day. We had like three pretty easy days in a row. We did like, we did suspension, we did brakes, and we did wheels and mm -hmm. tires. And yeah. I think leaving the garage after those three things were done and going to like, we had this, like we called it our test track. Uh, it was like this little Canyon right by the shop and just going on that first, like drive around the block with like the big brakes, the big tires and the big wheels mm -hmm. is right up there. And then I think right after that we did seats, which also uh, make just a huge difference. So I think basically I just described my favorite stage of the car, not necessarily a moment, but those early drives before anything went terribly wrong. Yeah, uh, were, I think I'll agree with you. We're really fun. One of my favorite days was the brake testing day oh, where yeah. we set up that, that circuit on at our te secret test facility mm -hmm. and drove them until uh, low car's brakes caught on fire, yeah. which was hilarious. We set up a little lap where we would just drive to 60, slam on the brakes, go back to the start line, drive to 60, slam on the brakes, go back to the start yeah. line. Uh, and we did that a for a while. It was amazing. It was a great moment. Yeah. Some not so great moments were when we were in installing the turbos on the car. It was definitely a standout pain moment for me. Yeah, it's pretty rough when your upper oil plan was cracked. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we were supposed, to, was that right before we were supposed to leave? Yeah, that was uh, like we went we went over schedule on like actually installing the turbo, mm -hmm. and then when we finally got the the piece or the piece when we got the kit installed, that's when we discovered that we had a small oil leak in our yeah upper oil pan, so we had to take that off, order one from a dealer, I believe. Oh, that same night, I think we were almost you know turns out we were far from done, but we thought we were like pretty much done. We were buttoning everything up. And uh, Zach Job just reaches to take the radiator cap off. Oh yeah! And just snaps <laughs> it. So that same day that Nolan got his upper oil pan replaced, uh, we had to come and replace our uh, radiator before we left. And then we ran into all the tuning issues. It's yeah. And then it was just a, a day from hell driving out to New Mexico. My car broke down. Four in the morning, we're on the side of the road. I mean, what what the f what were we thinking? That video in particular, I mean, we all at Donut agree that's probably like our best video we've ever made. Mm -hmm. But man, it was it was painful. You know, high car is too expensive for a 350Z, but I think, <laughs> you know, obviously these cars aren't anywhere near as rare or expensive or culturally uh, important <laughs> as uh, <laughs> most of the stuff in this museum. Um, really selling it. But I do think, you know, it is cool, <laughs> you know, like I think that it, it just shows that the Peterson is constantly pushing what their curation means. You know, like what the first time I went there, they had some Fast and the Furious cars. I was really mm -hmm. wasn't expecting that because I was like, oh yeah, well, I'll go look at a bunch of like old Aston Martins and you know, uh, Ferrari race cars and stuff. But I think their programming is so cool. Just like my dad got into cars from magazines and I got into cars from video games. I think there's a lot of kids now who are getting into cars because of YouTube. Uh, and that is, you know, sort of, the whole point of donut so it, it's just really cool to have partners like the peterson who feel that same way because 
I think it's really, really important for us to keep this community alive and sort of like recruit that next generation of car lover. Absolutely. The honor and privilege of this is not lost on me. It's pretty overwhelming, honestly, to have our cars in the Peterson. So thank you, Peterson. So Nolan, does more expensive mean more better? <laughs> Uh, in this context, I, I, I don't know how to answer that question. It's like, now it's like a, it's a question. It's almost like an art installation, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, if you think about it, I don't know a lot about art, but <laughs> these cars make me think. I don't you know, know art, but I know what I like. And what I like is for my car to drive after a track day, which yeah. neither of us succeeded at. Pretty positive I blew it up. It sounded like a, uh, a Subaru Boxer engine. Oh my god. Uh, we got black flagged because we were shooting a bunch of smoke out of the back. Okay. We broke the car. <laughs> Sweet. I think we may have broke ours too. One, I think it's really cool that I'm pretty sure that low car is the first plastic dipped car in the Peterson <laughs> I <hope> museum. So. <laughs> uh, and I also think it's very funny that they're definitely going to have to put cardboard under our cars because they're just going to ruin the floor. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Both those for cars sure. leak. If you like these cars and you want to see us build them, we built them over 16 episodes in about six months and with a little break in the middle. And High Low is currently airing right now on YouTube, Donut Media. If you liked any of these clips uh, or if you liked our stories at all, go check that out and follow along. So much thanks to the Peterson for putting our stupid cars in your awesome <laughs> museum. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, be kind. I love you. See you next time. So, Nolan, mm. does more expensive mean more better? Technically, sort of. yes. Definitely. Sort of, yes. Definitely, 100%. Yeah, so everybody likes to look back perhaps at where they got their interest in what it is that they do. And for me, I can put my finger on it. I really can. It's uh, 1964. My father took me to the World's Fair in New York. Uh, ironically, it was the last thing that I did with my father before he passed away. But uh, that event had a major impact on my life. The fact that the Mustang was revealed at the 64 World's Fair as an eight-year-old kid that was unbelievable to experience that. Uh, you know, at the time, I probably didn't know what role that was going to play in my life as I grew up, but clearly it set a seed in me that, uh, that is still there today. 26th anniversary celebration of McCall's MotorWorks Revival event. And thank you for coming tonight. To the events tonight's celebration, please join me in welcoming your hosts, Gordon and Molly McCall. idea of a kickoff party for car week turned out to be a pretty good idea. Next thing I know guests are chartering aircraft from our airplane company so they liked the idea. It was one of those win-win situations. The event continued to grow. It's just evolving the event every year, freshening it up, new things to look at, new experiences. We brought in a culinary element a few years ago which has really uh, turned out to be a very popular thing. California wines, incredible foods. It's much more than just looking at airplanes and cars anymore. There's a lot more to it. So chances are you've been to a lot of parties, but I can assure you, you've never been to a party like this before. 
The main reason is the eclectic gathering of equipment, the eclectic gathering of people from all walks. This isn't just race car drivers and show car owners. These are Fortune 500 captains of industry, CEOs, uh, you know, it's, it's literally everyone under the sun. So you put a group of like-minded people together, uh, have about 50 or 60 random cars on display, some you've only seen in magazines, others you've never seen before. Throw in airplanes, including modern aircraft available from airplane companies that are producing those models today, to vintage warbirds, World War II fighters from, from the 40s. Uh, you get all these things together, that's what our party is. And then you throw in over-the-top food, over-the-top beverages, uh, but most importantly, it, it comes down to the people that you're going to interact with that night. These are interesting people that have traveled the world. They've come to Monterey for Car Week to be a part of it. And this is a true example of an event that you are part of. You're not just there looking at someone else's cars. You're part of the reason why this night is so exciting. So I think that's how you describe what our event is all about. It's, uh, it's incredible. What's interesting about all of these events that take place during Car Week is there really is one common denominator amongst them, and that is the Peterson Automotive Museum's participation. Uh, they're at every major event. They bring cars from the museum. They show them, they share them, they drive them. Uh, the Peterson Automotive Museum is an amazing facility, hands down the finest car museum in our country. And their support of Car Week is instrumental. Like I said, they're everywhere. They take a sponsorship role in everything. Uh, and they share what they have down there. It's uh, everything from low riders to race cars. We've hosted the Peterson Museum for many, many years. And uh, we always look forward to what it is that they're gonna bring. We throw in the added bonus of aircraft. Uh, when you mix cars, motorcycles, and airplanes together, you start seeing the shared technologies and design work that, that exists between them all. Uh, what's really unique about our Jet Center party is that you will see all of this there, one place. Please join us August 11, 2021 as McCall Motorworks Revival celebrates our 30th anniversary.